Hey everyone and welcome back to my Rebel channel. I am ready to rev about Real Housewives of Atlanta season 15 episode 1. Who's gonna check me boo? And y'all know I had to say that because that's how Sheree said it some seasons ago. I had to get that out of the way just to bring that up. But I am excited because not only did this new season just air, it aired on my birthday and I'm not gonna lie, that is why this video is coming late. I literally just wanted to relax afterwards. I had to relax that whole weekend because I'm always on go every day trying to handle some business as well as I had my nephews. This is like, I believe I had them twice so far this week. Had them twice and I also give them later on in this week. So they take up a lot of my time whenever I have them. Like you have homework because they're still in school. You got to cook, help them with this. One of them is five. He loves to like be entertained. I am still going to find a way to bring an amazing review and talk about everything. But let me not waste any more of your time. We're going to go ahead and get into it because, because this season premiere literally opened up with a little bit of foreshadowing. We already get a clip of what we already seen a couple of months ago that let us know, okay, there's going to be some big drama and who did Candy get into it with? We get the little clips to know that it's going to escalate Escalade, but we're not sure at that moment what really took place to set that off. So then they go back to four days earlier and we're at Sheree's house. Sheree is looking good. Her home is still looking amazing. Her outfit, she's wearing her outfit when it comes to her she by Sheree. And I'm not going to lie, it looks great. Will I pay for those prices? No, I won't. But we see that her and Martel are so-called still going strong. And I'm going to be honest with y'all. I don't know much about Martel other than what I see on social media. I do not watch his show. My mom, my aunts, all of them watch the show and they tell me I need to go ahead and catch up on it. But I know it's going to have to be on a weekend that I'm not busy because there's so many seasons that has already passed by. But based off of social media, what he has said on radio shows and different things like that, Martel is not the best type of person a woman would want to date honestly that's what i got from that and it kind of showed a little bit especially in the first episode and i picked up on it sheree did at least say that martel shows her the utmost respect and i was like okay as he should if you like it then you love it and i only say that because she tells him to go to the bedroom or whatever he's going to change or whatever and she has a surprise for him he comes down and he immediately thinks the surprise is a threesome sir this does not look good <laughs> with your track record because why is that the first thing that come to your mind? Then we also see Sheree say that at one point in her life, she was actually open to it and she wanted to do that in the past. So that kind of lets me know that if push comes to shove, she will do that when it comes to him. But the fact that that is the first thing that came to his mind, where y'all supposed to be in a, like a monogamous type of relationship or y'all have never really discussed that in the beginning or so forth because you can definitely see Sheree kind of laugh it off a little bit. I'm like, mm, it's some other stuff, especially with what we're going to see is brought up later on in the episode. I was like, yeah, Martell is probably still not up to any good. They discuss everybody that is going to be at Ross's 40th birthday party. She lets him know that the whole cast is going to be there. And he take a little bit of jabs at Candy because Candy did call him an opportunist. Oh, that stuff. It's all the opportunist. Yeah. She's being used for publicity. Like, I guess you forgot what opportunist was. Yo, husband. I think they'll be respecting my person. Aren't they like three feet tall, both of them? They better be goddamn respect. Damn. And I'm gonna be honest with you. I can't say I'm really mad at the comment that he made, but at the same time, Todd has definitely proved that those little opportunist type of comments, they're fleeting. They're fleeting. He has showed that he's here to stay and he's not after that. He really loves his wife. So they can leave those little comments there. But it was like a little funny little shade there that for me, I didn't see nothing really like just outright bad there. But I also felt like, you know, you made a couple of comments about them being short. And I'm like, oh, okay. Maybe it's just because I'm 4'11 and people try to make little jokes. It wasn't even serious, honestly, y'all. I'm just saying. But he tried to make some little jokes. Like it was funny, but sir, don't do her because she's short. Us short people come in like big packages, okay? We are amazing. But then we have them bringing up Kenya going to be there. And he was like, oh, I don't think I met Kenya. And I, I find this ironic because later on, I'm going to go ahead and talk about it now. Kenya brings up that Martel was in her DMs. And I'm going to be honest with y'all. I know a lot of people are going to say, why does she bring this up? And I feel like that a lot of times when people say different things because of the time frame of when it happened. But it's clear he either deleted it or it was on vanish mode, something like that because of how social media worked. So either Kenya could have kept it to herself depending on how long ago it was. As long as it didn't really fall within that time frame, 
I would probably left that alone because it probably was like years ago. But if it's something that seems a little more recent and it's coming off weird and people saying he's an opportunist, I definitely understand Kenya bringing that up in that moment. Then we have Candy and the Candy Coated Click. They're back in full effect, just like not too, too much. I remember how they used to be in the earlier seasons and they used to drive other people mad. But they talk about Candy having new friends and Candy's looking like, what is y'all talking about? They get on the topic of Sheree and we learn Sheree does not like the fact that Candy Candy's making the spoofs and I'm gonna be honest I feel like that is funny shade because Sheree last season normally I try to leave last season stuff in last season until something comes up for me to actually have to bring up what was done in the past because I try to give people like clean slates or whatever but in this moment Sheree you definitely made a lot of comments about Candy <laughs> and I even try to hold off on certain opinions until I get more of the story but in this instance it's very clear Sheree you had a lot of things to say about Candy last year she made some spoofs they were funny, even down to when she did the one over Soulja Boy. Like, did y'all see that spoof? I felt like it was funny. I was like, we got to see a different side of Candy that we rarely see. And I feel like she honestly should keep doing the spoofs. I think they're actually a good idea in how to be creative. But of course, she's going to take offense to it. Even later on in the episode, we see Marlo talk about the spoof that Candy did on her. And she even found it fun. But then we see Kenya and Mayetta. They both show up and then we learned that Candy didn't really like the way that Mayetta did some stuff last season. She felt like Mayetta should have spoke up more for her. And I feel like in that moment, I get what Candy was saying. Like, yeah, stick up for your friend. It really wasn't that serious. I felt like all she said was, listen, I get what you're saying, Marlo. Oh, I forgot to say that it was about the Marlo thing if you did not watch last season, but I'm pretty sure you did if you're on this video. But I felt like Mayetta was basically trying to say both of y'all have said different things. So like, hey, just hear each other out type of thing. It really wasn't that serious, but they definitely moved past that. Also within this scene, we also seen them talk about Sheree's lunch. This is whenever Candy was talking to the Candy Coated Click. I forgot to mention this not that long ago. But they were talking about the lunch and how that went and how it could have been a little better. And I've already talked about that. I even clarified some of my statements at the end because there was somebody that had came out and they were saying, oh, she didn't pay me this. But based off of what I seen online, didn't match what we saw on like the runway. So I was like, which one is it, sir? Are you telling the truth? And we learned that he was talking about the reason why we didn't see the clothes from the runway on the website is because she didn't pay him. So in that moment, I had to clear that up. And I was like, yes, then if that's the case, Sheree, you owe that man his money and you should have paid him, honestly, because that's what everybody was looking forward to actually buying in the first place. I feel like people would have really spent money on that. But I think Sheree had kind of learned from that moment hopefully she did because I mean she does have a history when it comes to payments and stuff like that or how she handles business but hopefully she learns from that and take other people's advice when they're trying to help her because I felt like she by Sheree could have been like very grand and she could have really like just took that to a whole nother level at that time I did talk about that so I'll have that down in the description as well as the season recap that I did for last year also in this scene we see Candy talking to the ladies and she's telling them about the dynamics within her home how when when it comes to Todd, Todd feel like she doesn't make enough time. So what she said basically was, Todd is, I believe he's making a script and he needed some help with the script. And he feels like, you know, I'm always making time for you. You got to make time for me. So she said she tried to work some stuff around her schedule, but he couldn't do some other stuff to try to reschedule. So she had to move her schedule around just for him to get to the meeting date and other people couldn't do it, but he was able to move it around then. And that aggravated her because she felt like he's trying to make her the problem. And we also seen her talk about how with her kids. Her son called when she was in the confessional and he was telling her how he need her help with the homework. And she was like, you know, is someone there to help you? But he was like, yeah, but I want it to be you. And I think in this moment, I agree with what Kenya said. Kenya said, you know, you have to make time. We all know Candy as a go-getter and there's nothing wrong with a woman being a go-getter. We live in different times. And honestly, I feel like as a woman, you should always have something for yourself, honestly. But in that moment, I think when it came to her son and her husband asking for her attention, maybe she can cut back just a little bit on how many gigs she take within a year because listen, there's nothing wrong with chasing a bag, but oftentimes I think in our mindset, we're always on go, 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 chase the bag, chase the bag, chase the bag. But when do we sit down to actually to enjoy that, relax and make time for our loved ones a little bit? I think if Candy do that and they have better discussions on how to handle things or even share a schedule ahead of time, that can work. Even my dad. 
I want to say this. He would do family night every Tuesday night. Maybe they should incorporate something like that. If they do that, then that's the time frame to one, have fun and spend enough time with, that they need to have with each other, including the kids. And then set aside some time for like date night or just a bonding night to where they can communicate and handle stuff together. Set aside for each other. I feel like if they do that at least once out of week once out of the week for each of those type of categories then they're going to be fine just set aside a couple of hours like two to three hours because you know now an hour feel like 30 minutes the time be going by so fast but if they do at least two to three hours then that should work and then everybody should feel like they're getting something that they need from the other person and i also think todd should learn how to be understanding because we seen later on candy was trying to do family time and he still was just you know handling the script handling the script handling the script and i was like okay todd like go Go ahead <laughs> this is the time you was asking for so you have to be receptive when she's finally trying to put that foot forward for that you have to be receptive to that but we know that's going to have that like set in stone type of thing this is what their storyline is going to play up off of and i hope production does not cut that out because they do that a lot so my mic had cut out hopefully it still sounds good because i'm adding this in a little later and excuse the little calming music in the back that's something that i like to play whenever i'm doing editing or just in general like jazz coffee type of music i like to you know play that in the background or whatever but i want i do not want them to cut out the todd and candy storyline if they are going to show that what's really going on in their marriage because this is the perfect opportunity to show that within marriages you're going to have problems but watch us prosper and push through and show you how you can get through different things i feel like we really need to see some really good storylines like that that also showcase what's really going on in your life but we also want to see a redemption type of story even though i'm not saying that you know something is so bad that they need to redeem something within their marriage but oftentimes especially with Atlanta recently we see a lot of people getting divorces or something like that so I would love to see how a couple is working through the minor issues so that they don't become big issues down the line y'all understand what I'm saying hopefully that makes sense and we also seen in this scene that when they were talking about Sheree you know Kenya Mayetta and Candy they were talking about Sheree and they brought up how they heard that Martell is seeing other women in Atlanta and I was like, that, that ain't far-fetched because of his, like, history. Now, if he showed that he is a changed man, then I'd be like, okay, maybe that's just some news. But it kind of had me feeling like, okay, we already know his history. What we seen him say in the earlier scene, it was like, okay, maybe there's some truth to this. Maybe that's really what he's doing. I don't know. Y'all comment down below and let me know because I do not watch the other show. And I feel like if I would have watched that, then there would be, like, no confusion <laughs> on what went on when it comes to that. For me, I would be able to understand that a little more. So I'm going to really have to get on top of that. But now we're at Sonya's house. Sonya, listen. Sonya has a lot on her plate. And this is why I say that. Also, I forgot to say this because <laughs> I love to talk about the people homes when I'm watching this. So I'm adding this in a little later. You know, I'm catching the stuff that I had left out. Sonya's house is really nice y'all i think sonya house looks amazing because you remember her first season and they were waiting on like the countertops and different stuff for the kitchen that kitchen looks really nice i just had to say that really quickly though she literally has her whole family living in her home and i know with diff with different cultures they have like they'll have their family living in their homes with them and if that works for you that works but i know in our culture here in america a lot of people don't do that as often and if they do it's like max it may be like the parents or the grandparents staying there not like a whole bunch of people but she literally has like her mom her dad her sister her sister husband and the kid it's a lot of people under that one roof so when you have all that all the different personalities and different parenting styles that's going to be a recipe for confusion because you're going to try to do something the other one will be like no i just said this is how my kids or somebody should do this so that's where those type of problems come in honestly i feel like Sonya, it's time to get everybody to like move out so it won't be that type of issue especially because we've seen in the scene they were talking about how with Sonya everything is ongoing on her timing because they essentially all work for her they have their jobs because they do like maybe hair their assistant a publicist something like that along the lines and that's how they work so when you have that and you're in a home with somebody then there's really going to be no boundaries and I definitely feel like Wow, I feel like the sister talked to her a little crazy in this scene. <laughs> Am I the only one who picked up on it? Because she definitely did. But I also felt like there needs to be boundaries to where, okay, let's have a sit down and let's say during these hours, 
we're not working, which is kind of hard to say at the same time. And this is why I say that. I know I look at stuff both ways a lot, but I feel like that's a hard thing to say because with the type of profession and what Sonya does, their assistance is like available to them 24 seven. That's sad, but that's the truth. But because it's family and normally they give family perks, this is why I feel like they should just have a sit down, discuss this and say, hey, at this time, let's not discuss business. Or if you do, just shoot the text, leave it there. And in the morning, they're on it type of thing. I feel like that's what should happen. But I can definitely tell all these people in the house and all this stuff and the stuff that comes with that, that that's going to be a recipe for disaster because there's too many opinions of what's going to go on and how things should be handled. And then I want to state I have to say this y'all science confessional i know i have not talked about any of the women's confessionals i'm gonna do that a little more into the season when the women are giving us much more so i can really just like group it and talk about it how i normally did when i did potomac's but this confessional look here i'm gonna also drop in the description box my unpopular opinion on some fashion and different stuff like that i hate that nuclear set i am so tired of that nuclear set let it go <laughs> Maybe that's just me and my bias. Let that go. Then we get little mini clips. We have Kenya and her daughter. Her daughter apparently did really well with school or something like that. And can you get her the dresses? And I was like, this is so cute. Like, I don't have any kids. So wait until like I have like kids. Like, I, I want twins, if that makes sense, so I can get it out of the way. But when I have my little girl, like... <laughs> She's going to be stylish. I'm going to have her in the little dresses. So I thought that moment was really cute. I love to see her dynamic with Brooklyn. Then we have Marlo and her family. And one thing I got on Marlo about, that's why I'm going to have that season recap from like season 14 in the description. I felt like Marlo's story could have really gone somewhere last season instead of taking a turn for the worst because of her antics, honestly. And I think this is the season she's going to try to redeem herself. Like, our first time seeing Marlo this season is literally the dynamics with the family and them going to counseling. So I feel like that is a step in her learning from what she did last year. But we also learned that Marlo essentially has her nephews full-time. They haven't really spoken to or seen, um, you know, their mom in a good little minute so she's not really just a monty anymore she literally took on that mom role full time so i feel like getting a counselor is definitely going to help them out especially when it comes to communicating the hurt or different things they have gone through and we've seen a counselor talk about how important communication is and she also talked about having a family mission statement and i'm gonna be honest with y'all in this scene i think i think the mission statement is a great thing to do but in that moment am i the only one who picked up on the fact that they were like okay this is something that you gave us as homework but we didn't really take it as seriously so like before you got there we probably discussed it and we were like hey maybe our mission statement can be this because when the nephews were trying to explain the mission statement you can literally see marlo looking and she's looking like yes mm -hmm, this is what we're gonna do and i was like this girl really don't know what their mission statement is yet but i feel like that is something that a family should have especially because we see the counselor say whenever things get rough Oh, even when things are great, that's something you can look back to to make sure you're always staying on the same page. Then we have Sonya working out with Sheree. Listen, Sheree's home gym is something that I would love to have if time permits and the Lord allows. Because listen, <laughs> I would love to have a full gym in my home. I work out like seven days a week. And sometimes twice and within those days, sometimes I do that to make sure I stay in shape or whatever. But I love that them talking about the different things they had going on. And then we see Courtney, who is a friend of, come into the scene. And I ain't gonna lie, Courtney's outfit, I actually like that. I was like, okay, girl, we learn about what she do. She has a marketing firm. She also has a jewelry brand. I am going to look that up so I can see what her jewelry is like and if I should buy it and review it. Let me know if you would be interested in something like that. But as they're sitting down and they have the healthy snacks and different things like that and they're discussing stuff, we've seen Courtney bring up that we see the women ask Courtney, do she know the other women? Because they did invite her to Ross's 40th birthday party. And I do want to state in the scene, we also seen Sonya say, and I believe it, if it wasn't this scene, it was the scene before that. I'm trying to remember off the top of my head. But we seen Sonya say that the party was originally like forty or fifty thousand dollars, and it went up to a hundred thousand. And I was like, "Girl, 
She said she did say that she don't want the same perception of what she gave last year because her party really wasn't just terrible. The food was terrible. You don't do that to nobody. But the decorations gave what a normal person would give. But because it's housewives, we know what type of parties they throw. So when we do see the imagery of the party, I think it actually made sense. I know some people question that 100000 but you got to think about the venue because that wasn't a small venue. The aesthetic of that venue was top tier as well. Then when you think of the lights when they first walk in, I know that cost some money. And I remember at one point, at one point I was trying to throw a party and I needed the tables for like a casino thing, even though she did Harlem Nights theme. But those casino tables... They add up, especially when you have a whole bunch of people and then you have to get the people that work the stations and different stuff like that. I can see how she went over budget, honestly. But back to that scene. They were talking about the party and they say everybody that's going to be there. Courtney mentions that she already met Marlo. Then they bring up Candy. And she says, <sighs> she gave me, I'm going to make up something to solidify my peach. And I ain't mad at it, but like, but if you're going to do, if you're going to try to solidify your peach, then make it make sense because don't do the fake stuff, girl. Like that one was way, way fake because it was like, okay, she was asking people around about me. And then she was like, I know her. She's my friend. And da -da 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 -da. and then I was like, well, that part, I believe with Candy actually asking, do they know her and her showing a picture? Because we all know Candy does background checks. And I understand that because nowadays this world is very crazy and you never know who you're sitting next to. I'm going to Google somebody too. I'm going to look them up because you have to. So I understand that. So the fact that you're a new cast member that's coming on, you know, friend of, I will look it up. I will look you up to see who you are as well. So I get that. But the part where she was like, oh, she's trying to make it seem like we're friends. This little part here is going to come into play later because the dramatic she's going to give at the party is going to have me like, girl, what? Everybody made it to the party except for Drew. Ralph decided to come without her and everybody was looking at him sideways. They were, they were basically trying to figure out why are you here and not with your wife when they're going through a crisis? And I'm going to be honest. In this moment, I felt like maybe this was just his time to step out, get out for a little bit to support his friend and then come back. But at the same time, we know this is Ralph and we've seen what he has done the past, what, two to three seasons. So it's very clear that he tries to get away from his wife very often, which is going to lead into what we're going to see with their storyline later on in the season. And then we have Kenya. Kenya lets us know that her expectations for this party is very low because of what Sonya has given us. And I'm going to be honest, I already stated that she actually surprised me. I feel like Sonya actually did good with the decorations. I know the food is definitely going to be better than what she gave before. And even Kenya can agree as well as Candy. All the women are here for the decorations and how everything is set up. Then in the confessionals, we get the women talking about what they saw or what they thought of Martel and Sheree whenever they walked into that party. Here, Sheree was with Mr. Community Service, <laughs> okay? This year, she's with Community Property. I think Sheree needs her own spinoff show. Watch me date these dumb dudes. <laughs> Then we get to the real drama, what we all saw a couple of months ago. On one side, we have Candy, Sonya, and Courtney. And on the other side, you have Sheree, Kenya, and Mayetta talking. And I do not want to forget about this. Marlo is literally standing in the middle, eavesdropping on what Candy and Courtney has going on. And I'm going to be honest, that would be me in that moment because I would definitely want to know what's being said. Because we already know that Courtney has already gone to Marlo to state her issues or what she thought. And I'm going to be honest with you. I already said this. Courtney was trying to make a problem with Candy. It's all in her mannerisms. It's the way she was speaking. And even though she has like this very bubbly type of tone, you can definitely tell underneath it, it's like, I'm trying to make a problem with you to solidify my spot. So I definitely understood why after a while, Candy was like, okay, girl, I'm about to get you together. And I do want to state that I felt like and I do want to state that I felt like Sonya did really, really good in this moment because a lot of people felt like last season she didn't really have much of a backbone, if that's what they want to call it. But she definitely stood up to Courtney in that moment and she was basically like, listen, I get what you're trying to say. You already done explained this to me, but in the moment, you really just need to chill out. And then on the other side, you have Mayetta telling Sheree what she heard that's going on in the streets of Atlanta. Then we have Kenya telling Sheree what Martel basically did. Martel was in her DMs. He was. I believe it. The proof was there. He deleted it or whatever. And you have Sheree basically trying to say that, okay, she don't believe it. 
she's like top tier when it comes to the other women if that's what they're saying in the streets then why would he leave her who's a ferrari and she said the other women's are like a toyota or something like that and i'm like sheree right now it seems like you're in denial and instead of her actually taking it head on she decided to tell martel to come here and we already can tell that next episode because they actually ended here but it's going to pick up there on the next episode and we can definitely tell martel is going to either say something that's out of line or something is going to go on that's going to cause some real real problems and i'm gonna be honest with you right now i feel like this is how you open up a season I think the women did really well. If you've watched any of my previous videos when I talk about fashion, I normally rank them on the category of Van Gogh, We Want Mo, No Show. I would actually give this like a Van Gogh status because it opened up well. It wasn't anything that was just too malicious, too way out there. Like I'm, I'm only saying that because we remember how Potomac opened up when we was like really Giselle. But I feel like this is how you open the season and like have just enough to hold us over. And hopefully we actually get Drew in the next episode because how are you not in the premiere? I don't know. We're not sure going to have a strong storyline later on down the line, but I just felt like it was weird she wasn't in the beginning. But comment down below and let me know what you thought of this episode and I will see y'all next time.